knowing what the future holds. Well, if you knew that, you would know that there's not much future left. There's no guarantees in this world. You may, but you more than likely may not encounter that husband or wife. You understand? But if you keep going on and following this fairy tale lifestyle, I'm sure you will seek those things that are just not there. Your life is to present so many challenges to you and you are to keep devoting yourself to God and prayer and worship of him and him only. I say the God of the Holy Bible. Some of you may say the God of them other books. Hey, what's working for me? <laughs> Boy, I don't look forward to much of nothing. That's why I have nothing to lose. Praise the Lord. You understand? <laughs> if you don't look forward to anything, you have nothing to lose. And I have no great uh, riches within my place. I don't have, you know, some people, you know, a Rolex in their house that cost, I don't know, between ten and $50,000. I have nothing to lose in regards to that. I like the challenges. There's a new challenge that seems to be presented to me of finding somewhere else to go. And I think that I'm going to make it somehow. I'm not worried about it. I spoke to uh, my old probation officer because I'm off probation. And she said, yeah, because I just called her to ask, you know, cause since I recently got off of it. Like, because she used to suggest to me that, you know, there's programs and blah, blah, blah. So when she said something, she's going to send somebody by my house tomorrow to talk about um, housing. You know, there's some people <laughs> that pay $50 a month for a nice little apartment. I'm going to say nice little apartment because $50 a month, shit. I could do that. <laughs> it could be just this room, as long as there's a bathroom, a kitchen, and, you know, lights, heat, air, you know, windows. $50 a month. Why you niggas is pouring your heart into this world to make something. Boy, better live one day at a time. Get with the program. You may say, damn, he had so much in store for himself. He should have went out and just got a job like everybody else. I'm not following that path. I tried all of that. As soon as I got my license, a lower Marion cop found me with a little bit of weed in my pocket and revoked my license. That was about 20 years ago when I was 18. Yes, about the year 2000. 18. Did all I was supposed to do to get my license. Did everything legally, you know. Took the test, passed the written test, passed the driving test. And then a dumbass cop found me with $5 worth of weed and revoked my license. Things like that made me realize, man, I can't put my hope or trust in this world. My hope and trust is only in God. You understand that? This world will let you down. That's when you got to say, fuck the world. You understand? But y'all go on ahead and keep following the ways of the world and God's going to keep killing you dumbasses. And when you get your spirit knocked out your body, you're going to him. You're probably going to hell. Instantaneously, nigga. Instantly. You understand? So go ahead and... Have your utopia in this world. A utopia is like a perfect world. No such thing, man. When God's sending death to devour you all left and right. Shit, cancer kill more people than the coronavirus. It's just not. When it's something new, it's always interesting. And it's like a, 
what's the word? It's a um, phenomenon, you know, it's like, oh, wow, nigga, people been dying. God put so much death on you, you won't even be able to report it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sure who I have here with me. I'm just venting my thoughts of how the future, it's like there is no future. Nothing is guaranteed. Well, actually, something that is guaranteed, trials and tribulations. You will be challenged. You will be tested. Damn near every day of your life. Especially once you wandering through them streets. Oh, yeah. Once you, hold on, let me hit this joint. When you wandering through them streets, man, you're going to face it all. Like, maybe not every day. I don't want people to... I'm not paranoid. I don't smoke weed no more. <laughs> but you will. You'll be challenged from time to time. That's why, honestly, God gave me visions. I saw rivers of blood at Suburban Square. You understand me? You understand me? Look, ain't everybody designed or destined to be rich? Ain't everybody destined to have that perfect so-called girlfriend or wife or whatever? You might not get any of that. So what you going to do then when you don't have no money, when you have the opportunity to have friends, but your friends, maybe they, they enjoy smoking crack. Is that the kind of friends you want to be around? Boy, your friends, <laughs> they'll influence you to do the dumbest shit. Makes you wonder, are they really your friends? They got to make you wonder. Look, I'm far from perfect. But whatever, you know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Far from perfect, but I'm in good health and good spirits. I even lost five pounds, and I didn't even really have to exercise. I just stopped eating certain things 24-7. Wow, I lost five pounds. This is a blessing. I could lose a little more weight. 260 pounds, man. I ain't, got, I ain't got no business being that big, man. I got to get back down to 220 with stamina. And boy, I'll be a fucking assassin because that's the weight I was most of my life. At 250, 255, 260, I'm still strong. I ain't going to lie. I ain't that super swift. I got to catch you on surprise to give you some of this devastation. But once I lose an extra 30 pounds that I don't need, boy, I'll be able to bomb on any fucking body. And I don't mean it like that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There's war on all sides. There's some fights here that there's chances I, I could lose. You know what I'm saying? But you know, knowledge is power. The word of the Lord is sharper than any double-edged sword. So when I present these things to you, it's like I'm ready. I'm ready. You understand me? I ain't really concerned about nothing. That's how I live my life. The devil always throws something in there for me to worry about. And it always like at first, I, if I put if I'm stupid enough to listen to the devil's lie, like I, like I'm supposedly getting evicted. I mean, man, get the fuck out of here. But then, OK, then, well, don't you know, damn near <laughs> sadly to say I've been in and out of jail. Man, look, what I'm trying to say is this. Sometimes I have a nice place to live, as I do right now. You see, everything in here works. You know what I mean? And then sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm back to the dungeon. In and out. In and out. It's like, I'm not saying I want to go back to no jails or stupid shit like that. But it's whatever. Whatever. You know what I mean? Somebody try to harm me, I'm going to harm them and, and things like that. You understand? Y'all lucky I don't own no guns or nothing. Because I would have shot so many motherfuckers just for looking at me funny. And then I'd have been in jail for life. Up there with my boy. Then I went to school with Jay West. Up there with my old head. What is his name? They call him Slash. Y'all know what I'm talking about. 
I know who I'm talking about. You understand? Praise God, I ain't never had no access to them to them things. My niggas, damn, they have for my family own them things, but they know. <laughs> Praise God, man. The devil tested me in a lot of ways, but the devil ain't never put no gun in my hand because I would have shot him in his fucking head. The devil tested me in a lot of ways. And, you know, when my tests were of a human nature, like he throwing all these girls to me before I even knew that he existed. Yeah, I'm going to hit that. T talk to that girl. Hit her up. Holler at her. Jump on her. You know what I mean? When she's jumping on me. We, yeah. Yeah. Lust. Before I knew he existed and was sending me all these girls. Yes, I fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. Before I even knew what that it was a sin to have so many different girlfriends. That it's fornication. And that the Bible says abstain from fornication. The devil, man, that motherfucker has tried to set me up a lot. <laughs> One thing, praise God. He never gave me no gun because I would have shot him in his fucking head. I'm talking about the devil. He gave me weed. This damn devil gave me weed. I'm smoking what I thought was all my friends. Man, these niggas was demons. They passed me a fucking uh, blunt with uh, PCP in that shit, man. In Upper Darby. That's the highest I think I've ever been in my life. I will never forget that day. Chilling in the basement, a bunch of upper Darby niggas, black and white. You know what I mean? I think I put five dollars on it, you know. And these motherfuckers was ciphering blunts with fucking dust, and I thought it was just weed. Now I didn't skits out. I didn't lose my mind. I just was drifting, like slow motion, like walking on on the fucking moon. I left that house. There's like something you want to hit it again or something? Nah. I, I, just like that. Like, nah. And I'm just drifting like this, like slow motion. Slow motion. I, I crept out of that upper Derby basement. Next thing I know, I was laid out in the playground. How you see them videos with them K2 niggas or, or whatever drug it is, how them niggas be just laid the fuck out. I was laid out. I was laid out, man. I thought I was smoking regular weed, hanging with so-called friends. I ain't really know them niggas like that. I mean, they was a friend of a friend. Next thing I know, I'm laid out. Now, praise God, this is what happened. I'm on the, um, like, this is like near the Upper Darby Middle School. What's that shit called? Like, uh. There's a long lane near my friend Joel, where he used to live. There was like a school there and there was a patch of grass. He would know just what I'm talking about. I can't describe it because I'm not from there. I wish I could name it. I know I could look it up and find it. The moral of the story is I was laid out in the grass, laying there. And, the, and it was a hot day and the sun was beaming on me. I'm laid there like I can't fucking move. I'm stuck. I'm not even enjoying this so-called high. Praise the Lord, though. Guess what happened? That sun was beaming on me for a good five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. And something about it, it woke me up. The sun beaming on me like that, laid out like, you know, the sun's going to always wake you up. The sun is going to, and it, that's what it did. Praise God. It's like I was in a coma kind of. High on that fucking uh, angel dust, PCP. And I didn't even know it was that, nigga. I thought it was just weed. I don't even remember the taste. I thought that shit was just weed, just like everything. It had weed and it had angel dust in it. Thought I'm just smoking weed. These motherfuckers. They must, you know what I mean? They, they was demons. Only a demon will smoke angel dust on the regular. So I'm laid out. In the middle of Upper Derby, you know, trees and grass, like a little park almost. I'm just laid there on my back. You know what I mean? And five, ten minutes of that sun beaming on me, it's like God revived me. And I snapped out of the coma. I was like, oh, shit, okay, I feel better now. I could walk. 
And I went straight the fuck home, I think. I mean, I know I went straight home. The first thing I think I did was go to sleep. I walked all the way to the 69th Street Terminal, hopped on the 100, walked all the way up the block. It like had finally shook off of me. When I got home, I think I took a nap. And I said to myself, never again. That's what friends will do for you. So-called friends will pass you a blunt and not even tell you that. Yo, this shit is wet. This is this is dust. This is what demons smoke. So-called fucking friends, nigga. That's why weed is the devil. Because that shit could be mixed with anything, boy. That shit could be mixed with some shit that have you tripping more than a little bit. Don't smoke that shit, nigga. Trust me. It ain't innocent. Y'all act like it all is harmless. Oh, you should just know who you're buying from. Fuck all that. If you got to take them kind of precaution, listen. I guarantee you, if you got sons and daughters, they're going to end up having a bad high, a bad trip. I think everyone has had a bad high or a bad trip. That's why your friends are not your friends. When they say, here, smoke this. Oh, what's this? That's weed. It's going to make you feel good. The fuck all that shit. Your friends is the damn devil. And if you don't have God, you don't know how to operate and let these things go. And the end is near. You understand me? My, my sanity is completely intact. I've never had to go upstate like a lot of these niggas. You got niggas that so-called never really smoke or drank. They were athletes in the community of Ardmore or whatever. Niggas that robbed banks. Fuck is you doing that for? What you, huh? Huh? I thought you was a good person. <laughs> you got niggas that did the damnedest things. And these are supposed to be your friends. Now, I don't look down on those that have made mistakes. I'm just telling you, your friends ain't your friends.